good early June Saturday morning in Michigan. I'm with the adorable, charming, and award-winning Poppins. We're driving along the route for Old US 131, which used to be a plank road. Poppins and I are taking a break from the massively time-consuming project of Bahala to take a road trip to investigate the phenomenon of wooden roads in Michigan. Our first stop on our road trip was to a namesake, the Old Plank Road Restaurant in Plainwell, Michigan. I really have no idea if there's a strong connection to the Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo Plank Road. It's been well over 100 years since the wooden turnpike existed, but we were interested in some breakfast. Thank you, just Diet Coke. We have a full of sausage omelet, have an asparagus omelet today with bacon in it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It was definitely one of those busy small town restaurants with a local feel and good food. Polish cheese wheat. Yeah, sounds good. Get yogurt if you'd like on top of it, and then just fresh fruit on top of that. Sounds like a lovely Perfect. way to start the day. You'll love it. The old Plank Road restaurant didn't disappoint as Megan, the second generation owner, came out to greet us with lots of history and connections to a road that existed well over a century ago. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'll try to find the I know, you're in the middle of a lot of things. So when Michigan was just a young state, there really wasn't a good road between Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo. And thanks to the panic of 1837, the state had no money, so townships were given the authority to build roads and private companies could be chartered according to the state constitution which was amended to build plank roads. And in 1851 the Kalamazoo Gazette published this. Everyone knows that a plank road would not only obviate the difficulties of this middle passage of mud and mire but pay to stockholders from 20 to 30 percent of their investment when the long train of loaded teams shall pass daily through its toll gates. Thanks a bunch for the pictures and stuff. We could have stayed and soaked up the curiously comforting atmosphere, but we had lots to see. There. The Old Plank Road restaurant. Good hometown cooking. Friendly people. So it's kind of like a mini Route 66 in Michigan, huh? That's a good point. In the mid 1800s, Michigan, just before railroads started to lay their tracks across the state, built a bunch of wooden roads. Over a thousand miles of them. And by 1855, investors pooled their money. Lumber was pretty cheap and abundant at the time and they built the plank road. The planks were 16 feet long by three inches wide and there was a toll station every few miles. And the plank road from Kalamazoo to Grand Rapids cut the travel time from two days to one day. But it was still a pretty arduous journey. And speaking of toll houses, here is the toll house just south of Plainwell, Michigan. It's got a little monument that was erected by the Daughters of the American Revolution. But the toll house actually had a large barn that covered the road and then you would pull inside to the gate and if nobody was there, you had to walk up to the house to pay your toll. So when the Michigan Constitution was amended because the state had no money to build roads so they wanted to get private companies involved, 202 companies were initially chartered to build 5,082 and a half miles of road. But when it was all said and done, only 1,179 miles of road were built by 89 companies of the original 202. So plank roads were relatively short-lived. The Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo plank road only lasted from 1855 to 1871. One of the biggest reasons for its decline, well in 1870, the Grand Rapids and Indiana Railroad was constructed. And the boards quickly, within a few years, tended to warp, splinter, and rot. And occasionally as a stagecoach was going down the plank road, a board would flop up and hit the bottom of the stagecoach and cause some damage. There's even a poem written about the risky travel that you did when you took a plank road, and it, uh, it sounded like hell. And in fact, uh, Mr. Mark Twain, the American humorist. Poppins, where are my glasses? I found my glass. Poppins is a little nervous as I redrive and try to readjust my camera equipment. <laughs> so anyways, Mark Twain said, so so Mark, Tw Mark Twain was on a tour of the Midwest and he actually took the plank road from Kalamazoo to Grand Rapids to give a 
presentation. After the trip on the road, he said, the road would have been more comfortable to travel if some unconscionable scoundrel had not, now and then, dropped a plank across it. So you take his point, of course, plank roads were pretty tough to travel. So along another section of the road, from Battle Creek to Hastings, we found this, Barney's Tavern. So in 1933, at the 100th birthday of Nathaniel Barney's building, Tavern, it was reported in the paper, some memories. Young folk of Battle Creek would gather for their frolics of muddy musk dancing feet. They would pound at the second floor dance hall. So imagine a second floor dance hall there. Meals were famed with aroma of thick bacon, brimmed beakers, of nut brown ale that also had a far-reaching reputation. So Nathaniel Barney was known for standing in his front doorway and shooting at game. But he was also known for welcoming guests to his tavern. Look, it's as perfectly poppable for poppins. So, are the Nestle Toll House cookies named after a plank road? Toll booth? Well, kinda. The myth actually goes that a lady named Ruth Wakefield, um, I think back in the 1930s, um, had a restaurant and she was making cookies. And what was the deal with the recipe? She ran out of nuts, so she broke up a semi-sweet chocolate bar and put it in there, hoping that they, the chocolate would melt. But they became kind of like Toll House cookies, I guess. Nestle bought it from her, and uh, but she didn't have a restaurant. It was named after a restaurant, the Toll House Inn. Um, but uh, it wasn't actually a toll house. The toll house was actually across the street from the Boston Bedford Turnpike. She named her restaurant the Toll House because it was across the street from the Toll House. That's an interesting tidbit. All right, good talk. I enjoy our conversations. Now there isn't much evidence of plank roads existing today. They did find an old plank road in downtown Saginaw back in 2010, but Poppins and I are headed to the last vestige, the last evidence that a plank road existed, we're heading to um, a toll house, toll house number two. And toll house number two is probably the last physical original evidence that plank roads existed in Michigan. In the middle of suburban shopping malls just outside of Michigan's capital is a park made up of historic buildings. When developers started pushing dirt around to make way for their food courts, Orange Julius's, and Banana Republics, a group of history buffs asked if they could have some of the buildings they were about to demolish. They dragged them here to the Meridian Historic Village. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice Howdy. to meet you. Thank you for making time for us. Yeah, it's uh, my normal day, so I'm just mad people show up. You know, like a toll booth today, they're pretty small, um, constructed pretty quickly usually. Um, I tell people it's like a side gig. Um, the the toll gate operators in the 1800s would all have other jobs, um, and this would just be a little extra source of income. So this is a depiction of the indigenous trails. Um, a lot of our highway systems are built over these. These are really ancient, um, and some of their construction techniques in this area would have been like bending the trees backwards, so it just sort of grows this path um, over a really long period of time. So that's a that's a basically a three-year-old road, and then last season's road. I think that last season's, and then the other ones actually, I think we took a year off because of COVID. So that's, okay. that's the 20, oh, yeah. 2019's road and then wow. last year's road. Yeah, it's already warping and yep. yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, so something Now though, this is, seems the same. pretty big for a toll house in it a is, side yeah. gig. Um, and he would use, um, he'd also have his farmhouse. So here's the, the guy, El Proctor. Um, and yeah, he just used it as a little office. Tolls are not historically accurate too. That's just, uh, because we do math lessons here for elementary school kids. It's going to be, uh, well, for a beautiful woman, I guess you're a neat creature, so two cents, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> neat creature. So basically, this this is what a toll gate would have looked like? I mean, it refers to cows, it refers to neat and clean. <laughs> That's what, okay, neat. Is well, there's, there's no beautiful woman on there, so, it, and thanks a lot for pointing that out. So it, there you have it. Uh, plank roads in Michigan. Our road trip's almost done. I have to get back and do the laundry and dishes. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. I hope you liked and subscribed. Um, I heard a few of you haven't yet, but uh, um, interesting history of the plank roads, and uh, you can still see a little evidence of them these days. So take a road trip, have breakfast, do things. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Channel's Restless Viking. We'll see you soon.